Lesson 6.1, Equivalent Fractions. Fractions are equivalent when they are equal and represent the same amount. Here we have two rectangles that are the same size, but this rectangle on the top is split into three equal parts, and one of the three parts is green. This rectangle is split into six equal parts, and two of the six parts are green. We can see that one-third is equivalent to two-sixths. We can use models to show equivalent fractions by modeling one fraction with the same size parts. Then use different same size parts to match the length of the first model. Here we have one hole in red, and this is half. We have three one-sixth pieces, and it's the same length as the half. So one-half is equivalent to three-sixths. One whole pumpkin is equivalent to two half pumpkins, and two whole cookies are equivalent to four half cookies. Equivalent means equal to. Mrs. Kim baked a pan of brownies. She cut the pan of brownies into fourth size pieces. She kept one fourth and her family ate the rest. Then she cut the part she kept into two smaller equal size pieces. We can use grid paper to model how Mrs. Kim could cut the part she kept. We have one fourth here, one fourth here, one fourth here, and one fourth here. So we split the pan of brownies into four equal parts. Her family ate this part, and she kept the other one of the four parts. And it says she cut this part into two smaller equal size pieces. So here's the two smaller equal size pieces. She also could have cut it across this way, and that piece would be equal to that piece. So she originally cut the pan into fourths. So the pieces were this wide, see? And this is the part the family ate. Then she had one fourth left and she split it into two smaller equal size pieces. Her one fourth became two eighths. One fourth is equal to two eighths. One fourth and two eighths are equivalent fractions. Here we have one whole bar. And here's one-fourth, and one-fourth is equal to two-eighths. If Mrs. Kim then cut both one-eighth size pieces into two smaller equal size pieces, she would have four-sixteenths. One-fourth, two-eighths, and four-sixteenths are all equivalent to each other. They all are the same length here, see that? Fractions that name the same amount are equivalent fractions. We learned about the parts of fractions last year in third grade. We did third grade math chapter eight and chapter nine, and they'll be linked in the description, a link to the third grade math if you have forgotten how to do it. So the numerator is on the top and the denominator is on the bottom. The numerator tells us how many parts are counted or shaded, and the denominator tells us the number of equal parts in all. So for one-fourth, we have it split into four equal parts, that's the denominator, and one part is shaded, that's the numerator. So here we have a bar, a red bar, that's one whole, it's one part. Here we have four parts, for fourths. There are four fourths here. And here are eight parts. It's eight eighths. And a whole divided into eight parts has two times as many parts as a whole divided into fourths. Here there's eight parts. Here there's four parts. Four parts times two, that's twice as many, is equal to eight parts. And the numerator and denominator in two-eighths 
are each twice the numerator and denominator in one fourth. Here we have one fourth, here we have two eighths, their equivalent. If we have one fourth and we multiply both the numerator and denominator, both of them are being multiplied by two. We have one times two is two for our new numerator and four times two is equal to eight for our new denominator. One fourth is related to two eighths. They are equivalent fractions. We multiplied them both the numerator and denominator by that same number two and we made an equivalent fraction. Tala has two-thirds yard of ribbon and Emma has three-sixths yard of ribbon. How can we determine whether Tala and Emma have the same length of ribbon? We need to write an equal symbol for equal to or a not equal to symbol for not equal to. We can use a number line and we can split the number line into thirds. We have zero thirds, one third, two thirds, three thirds. And we have another number line split into sixths, six parts. Zero six, one sixth, two six, three six, four six, five six, and six six. Tala has two thirds, that's one two, she has this much. And Emma has three six, she has this much. So are two thirds and three six equal or not equal to each other? Well, we can see two thirds is more, it's greater. Two thirds is not equal to three six. Two thirds would be two of these and three six would be only three of these. We can see that two thirds is greater than three six, so they're not equal to each other. The fraction bar is called a vinculum. So this bar going across this way is called a vinculum. We need to write it horizontally like this to make fractions easier to add, subtract, multiply, or divide. If you try to be fancy and write it like this, you're going to have difficulty adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing your fractions. And you'll end up having trouble later on in high school when you get into algebra because we use a bar like this a lot as we get into higher grades of math. So to make it easy on yourself or make your math life easier, try to remember to write the vinculum going straight across like this horizontally, okay? So the numerator tells us how many parts are counted or shaded. The denominator tells us how many equal parts there are in all. And a fraction with a larger denominator will have smaller parts because the whole is split into more pieces. We have a whole, then we have a half and a half, and it's got a little two for a denominator because it's split into two pieces. The denominator is two. Here we have tenths. There's ten tenths. It's split into ten pieces. The denominator is a ten, because it's split into 10 pieces, but each piece is much smaller in length than the half pieces, see that? So we know that this is a tinier piece because the denominator is larger. We can make equivalent fractions by multiplying both the numerator and denominator by the same number. Here we have 1 half, and if we multiply the numerator times 2 and the denominator times 2, we have 1 times 2, so our new numerator is a 2. And for the denominator, we do 2 times 2. That's equal to 4. We have 1 half is equal to 2 fourths. And we can take 1 half and multiply both the numerator and denominator by a 3. We have 1 times 3. That's 3 for our new numerator. Then we do 2 times 3, we get a 6 for our new denominator, and 1 half is equal to 3 6. We can take 1 half and multiply both the numerator and denominator by a 4, and we'll get 1 times 4 is 4, and 2 times 4 is 8, we get 4 eighths. And 1 half 
is equal to 3 6 and it's equal to 4 eighths. They are equivalent fractions. So the numerator gets jealous and it wants to be multiplied by the same amount as the denominator. I'm going to learn more about making equivalent fractions in the very next lesson, 6.2. We need to write equal or not equal to in the circle. We have one-fifth and we have two-tenths. So what can we multiply this denominator 5 by to equal this denominator 10? And we think, well, 5 times 2 is equal to 10. So we can multiply 5 times 2 to equal the 10. We don't want the numerator to get jealous. The numerator needs to be multiplied by the same amount to make an equivalent fraction. So we multiply the numerator times 2. And 1 times 2 is equal to 2. So we write a 2 for our new numerator. So we see that 1 fifth is equal to 2 tenths. So we know this is equal to. Now let's look at this one. We have 2 fourths and 3 eighths. We think, what can we multiply this 4 by to equal an 8? Well, 4 times 2 equals 8. So we can think, 4 times 2 is equal to 8. The numerator gets jealous and it wants to be multiplied by 2. And 2 times 2 is equal to 4. So 2 fourths is equivalent to 4 eighths, not 3 eighths. So we know this is not equal to. So just like you see a do not enter sign where there's a slash through the thing. This is an equal sign with that slash through it saying, no, not equal to, okay? Dave and Bob each have pizzas that are the same size. And Dave cut his pizza into fourths and Bob cut his pizza into sixths. If they each ate, half of their pizzas, how many slices did they each eat? So we can use models like these pizzas to help us find the answer. We can even draw a bar and Dave had his split into four equal pieces and he ate half of them so that would be two and Bob had his split into six pieces and he ate half of them so we can see that would be three. Two-fourths is equal to three-sixths. They're both half. So let's see some higher order thinking skills. Tala bought two cookies to share with three of her friends. She cut each cookie in half. Will each person get an equal share? We need to circle yes or no. So we think Tala plus three friends, that makes four people. So they need four equal shares, but the cookies are not the same size. If she cuts each cookie in half and gives a piece to each of her friends, will everyone get an equal share? Well, if you said no, you're right. The cookies are different sizes. So even though someone could get a half and someone else could get a half and then another friend could get a half and then Tala could have a half, they're not the same size halves. They're from two different size whole cookies. So they won't get equal shares. So in order for each person to get an equal share, Tala should cut each cookie into one fourth pieces. Both cookies are cut into one-fourth pieces. Then she could give each person one-fourth of the smaller cookie and one-fourth of the larger cookie. Then they would each have a large piece and a small piece and they would have equal shares. So you see what we did? Because the cookies were two different sizes, she couldn't cut them each in half and share them equally among four people. 
but if she cut each cookie into fourths and then gave each person one fourth of the small one and one fourth of the large one, they would get an equal share. So remember, equivalent fractions are equal fractions and they name the same amount. In our next lesson, 6.2, we're going to learn how to generate equivalent fractions. Generate means to make. So we're going to learn how to make equal fractions. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.